<laughs> so today is the day, y'all. Oh my goodness. All right, so 49 days ago, Hurricane Helene tore through the Tampa Bay area and 13 days later, our lives got turned upside down as Hurricane Milton tore through the Tampa Bay area again. And a major hurricane is barreling toward Florida, aiming directly at an area that doesn't usually see direct hits from hurricanes like this, Tampa Bay. This isn't a drill. This is the biggest storm that we have certainly seen here in the Tampa Bay area in over a century. And as promised, I wanted to share with you guys what was happening in our world because, um, you know, if, if you're new here, we talk about all things Tampa Bay. And this, unfortunately, is one of the things that um, we're going to have to talk about. The good, bad, and the ugly, right? Everybody thinks that living in paradise is nothing but sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. And there are realities that you have to deal with. And in today's video, I wanted to deal with some of those realities. Over the last month, I've been sharing our journey about what's happened. And I promised that I would show you guys some updates with our home. And unfortunately, there, <laughs> there's nothing to update you on um, right now, outside of the fact that we've been able to tear out all the floors and now we're in a holding pattern. And the reason that, that we're here and waiting is because the contractors are extremely busy. Um, as you can imagine with having over 40,000 homes damaged from one storm, um, back to back storms I should say, uh, that puts a lot of pressure, a lot of demand on the market and uh, now we're in a holding pattern to get qualified uh, contractors in the home and we're not the only ones and that's not the only reason we're in a holding pattern. You know, as I've shared before, we live just a little over a mile away from Indian Rocks Beach that was absolutely devastated during Hurricane Helene. And um, I was fortunate enough to get down and uh, be able to go down and help, uh, help love to hand, help uh, people, you know, unfortunately gut their homes to get them ready for contractors. And then 13 days later, um, Hurricane Milton showed up. And for the last 36 days now, we've been you know, displaced. We're not living in our home currently. As a matter of fact, we're living in an RV that's parked right out in our front yard there. I don't know if you guys can see it through the windows. Um, and we're probably going to be in that RV for at least another two to three weeks before they can get the floors in. And that's if we choose to move right back in after the floors are replaced. Um, but we're considering a full remodel at this point since we're moved out. Uh, and I don't know about you guys, but nobody wants to move out of their home twice. There were some projects that we had on the agenda that got accelerated because of this. And if you're gonna move, why not just get it done? But that's easy to say, um, and not necessarily always easy to do. And I think we're one of the fortunate ones. As I've shared before, like we have our health, you know, we've got a shelter and, um, like a lot of people, you know, we've got an, the resources to be able to do some things. We can't do all the things we'd like to do, um, you know, but, you know, we're going through some challenges and I wanted to bring you guys up to speed on what those were. Um, you know, we had to wait for the home to dry out completely. Uh, we've had a mold and mildew inspection. Uh, we are waiting on the air quality results. The guy came in, said things looked good, but we want to make sure that we leave that up to the science to make sure that we're, um, you know, not putting our family at risk. We did find some mold in the bathroom through walls, which you kind of expected. It's tile on one side. Um, it was buttoned up pretty good. So that's, if it's gonna grow, it's gonna be there. Now it's been dry. Um, that mold is not a threat right now, unless it gets wet again, but ultimately it needs to be removed and mitigated. So we're working on that, but that's a very small uh, component of what could have happened. And, um, you know, we're, we feel very fortunate in that respect, even though we're having these challenges. Now, um, we're, I, I consider ourselves to be very fortunate in that respect. If you live on our coastal communities, like Indian Rocks Beach, for example, or Clearwater or St. Pete Beach, and all the way down into Bradenton, Sarasota, you know, they're at the mercy of FEMA coming in. And you know, it's not as simple as tearing your home out, tearing the drywall out and just start rebuilding because you have to get uh, FEMA approval first, and I'll explain why here in a second. Um, and then you also have to you know, if you don't have the resources, you have to wait on your insurance to come through. And that is not happening quickly. And as a matter of fact, insurance, you know, they're a business and they make more profit by not paying out. And I'm not here to get into the politics of it, but at the end of the day, um, let's just say that uh, it, it is a challenge, right? We went through the process, Unfortunately, we didn't have flood insurance. We're 43 feet above sea level. Um, we're not, we weren't in danger of storm surge and that's not how our home got wet. Our home got wet because there was 12 inches of rain that cut through the area in about a six and a half hour time period. And our home is one of the lowest uh, in our neighborhood. So 
somebody's got to get the water. And that unfortunately was us. And I think there was a few more neighbors that um, I, I saw some flooring in their driveways as I walked through the area as well. So, you know, we weren't the only ones impacted. But again, going back to our coastal communities, those guys are in a different situation because they have to wait for FEMA to come through. And there's what's known as a 50% rule. And I'm not gonna to get too far in the weeds with this, but if FEMA deems that that home is more than 51% damaged, uh, they could, they actually have the right to condemn that property and not allow you to, to move back into that home as it currently is constructed. And what that would mean is that homeowner would then be required to take that home and elevate it up to the new construction standards, which I think is 13 feet, depends on the community you live in, um, but I, I believe it's 13 feet above sea level meaning that the home would have to go up in the air. So typically what people do in that situation is they either tear them down and then rebuild from scratch, or they get these homes jacked up. And that cost is major. We're talking, you know, 250 to $300,000 to do that. And you're at the mercy of contract, the experts who can actually do that again. So obviously a lot of challenges come along with this. And, um, you know, this isn't an easy thing to, to, to necessarily have to share, but I always wanna be transparent as I can um, with my channel. You know, For the last two and a half years, we've moved 150 families here to the Tampa Bay area. And thank goodness, out of all of the people we've moved down, not one of them has reported to me that they've had damage to their home let me rephrase that, flooding to their home. Some of them have lost some fence panels and stuff like that, you know, with these, these major storms, but they have all been safe and spared. And I'm grateful for that. Um, but I wanna share with you guys some of these challenges. And a lot of that reason is, um, I would say more than 80% of our clients have, have taken um, the, the path of buying new construction homes. Um, now there's risk there too. I'll, I'll unpack this on a later date, but um, their insurance is typically cheaper. The cost of living is less um, when you buy new construction. When you want to live near the coast, you are taking a risk. And I shared this before, Kate and I, we knew what we were getting into here. We knew the challenges. And quite frankly, um, while this is not how we wanted to spend our winter and Christmas, I mean, we literally just bought a Lego Christmas tree to put in the RV. That's real life, guys. Um, we're grateful to have our health and the opportunity to, you know, get back into this home at some point. Um, and we'll worry about the, we're gonna take care of the water mitigation. And, and, um, and I'll walk you guys through that too, how we're gonna solve some of those problems. But um, you know, when it comes to living in the area, these are things you have to be just respectful of. You know, Florida is a peninsula on the ocean. And sometimes I think people forget. Right. We get very starry eyed with the fact that the you know, you, you see the sun, you see the sand, you see these incredible Gulf Coast sunsets and um, you just can imagine yourself in, in nothing but pure lifestyle bliss. But remember, we've got to live here and um, these unfortunate realities are in play. Right. And as I sit here talking to you guys right now, there is another storm brewing in the Gulf of Mexico here on November 14th. And we may have to pack up our family, move that RV out of our front yard because, we're, like I said, we're only a mile and a half of the ocean and skeet out a lot of here and evacuate again. And that is not something that I'm interested in doing, to be quite honest with you. But it's the reality of it. Sorry for the uh, laundry going off. This is our life right now. <laughs> I wanted to be as real as possible, but I wanted to, to bring this video to you guys and just share with you, um, you know, what what we're going through right now. Um, keep you updated on, on, on the um, on the progress here or process to the lack of progress, I should say. Right, so that is like seven and a half, eight inches is where the water line was um, out here. Pool is completely trashed. Um, so. Who knows what that's gotta be. The fence, for the most part, stayed intact outside of these two sections. And, you know, continue to share our community with you. And, you know, we're gonna get back into our showing you these great community videos, but I wanted to give you guys an update because so many of you have asked about our family. So many of you reached out through email and through Instagram and DM'd us, letting us know that we, we were in your thoughts and prayers and we received that. And just, I wanted to say thank you um, and, and let you know that us, you know, here, here at True Living Group, we are still here serving clients. We still have clients flying into town, you know, making decisions about moving to the area. Some of them have jobs and they don't have choices, but there are still a lot of people who are choosing to move here even with those risks. 
Some people call them crazy. I understand those people. We're not selling our house. We have no intent on doing that um, at this point. We love living here. We're about to celebrate our sixth anniversary. I'm gonna share that with you guys coming up soon. Um, and I just wanna say thank you to our audience, who, those who have reached out, those who have kept us in your prayers. We appreciate it. Continue to keep our community in your prayers. And we're gonna continue to bring great lifestyle community videos about what's happening here in Tampa Bay. And as I say, always until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.